Good evening. I'm David Escobar Martin, the Poet Laureate of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and you are watching the opening act of the 2016 Poetic Address to the Nation, a unique and dope poetry event taking place here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Painted Bride Arts Center. Thanks to Philly Cam and Free Speech TV, we are live streaming this event all over the country where folks are watching at home and at viewing parties. Over the next 20 minutes, before the poetic address, you will hear the voices of five emerging poets in Philadelphia, Sabrina Slavchenko, Shanika Briggs, Cassidy Jones, Julian Rondel, and myself, who will set the tone for what is to come in more ways than just one. If something you hear moves you to respond, whether you're here with us in the studio or at home, feel free to nod your heads, snap your fingers, and let out a mmm. <laughs> That's how we do poetry right here in Philadelphia. And if you haven't done so already, please turn off your cell phones for the next 90 minutes. We also ask that our live audience not take photos during the address. And if you are at home, please join us online with the hashtag PoeticAddress16. Now, without further ado, let's begin the preamble to the Poetic Address to the Nation. When your news cameras come back to Afghanistan, find the martyrs limb by limb. Piece together a post-war jigsaw puzzle of lovers' lands, patches of scalp, babies split in two like a cracked egg, and faces that cling to souls like chewing gum. Where the sky is filled with the ash of people, like the seeds of dandelions, the ungranted wishes spoon clouds, and when the rain comes, it is flung like spittle from the mouth of a mongrel god, children with chicken bones for holy fathers, stomachs that are one part crater and two parts, what if I never see the moon again? Children with trash cans for eyes left on roadsides like garbage collection. There's a town with the bull where the dead still dance in ghost form like an ocean of candles, where mosque ceilings have fallen on the innocent and attempts to bring paradise closer. Heaven's doors are bursting like a dam between them and damnation stacked. Bunk bed formation, their corpses are towers of rotting Buddhas. Replace your skyscrapers on the way from work. Imagine every window screeching like a tea kettle, every pane collapsing and exploding like a desert sunset, or redraw your sidewalks with skeletons instead, laying neatly like a line of teeth, their bones a grin in the sand. We have made video games from parts of men. Stuff their bodies into electric silver caskets. Apocalypse is lit at the push of right and left triggers on AK-47s and PS2s. Soldiers snap necks. Graphic designers snap pictures. Corpses crawl onto TV screens controlled like wireless puppets. There is no nationalism in the cemetery. Just a veteran in an American living room. His tongue is a beggar's arm. His legs. Swallowed by a firework, his laughter sounds to him like ammunition still. Black holes of grief and bloody hijabs make a burning master of his body. If his dead friends were to link hands, they'd circle the equator. A farewell embrace to everything holy that's bullet holy. He's watching his, his son turn the living room into a parody of his service into an exercise in distraction purchased in high definition. Black apps and black outs in villages reduced to shrapnel. Modern warfare has gone viral. The bullet holes are digital. They've pimped out the pain in pixels. They call it a call of duty. People keep asking where I come from. I say, New York. I mean, 
My father and his people are still in Jamaica. I mean, my mother's kin know islands and south but have stories of Nigeria. I mean, everywhere, but nowhere actually. I come from corners in mourning, holding the weight of too many teddy bears and candles and RIP t-shirts and hashtags that have since faded into the backdrop to be illuminated by some new tragedy. I come from the desensitization of death with the piercing pain never hurting any less. I come from the bluest water and hot sand with bodies buried beneath it from wondering how many of our sons do we have to watch set before we've sacrificed the entire sky. I come from women whose true loves are all lost and found vents whose hearts are all brass, but it wasn't always that way. I come from wishing I knew the them I hear stories about. Before they were just figurines sitting creepily in church pews, I come from churches and knowing that is the only way any of us survive from knowing that this meal ain't get here easily from family sticks together. Thursdays, beg your mama to stay at Aunt So and So's house that weekend from double dutch matches, the rope being inflicted, and it's not even your turn until the sun has way past set where I come from, doesn't have a location but it does have a place in this universe. It might just have a birth certificate and a social security card or maybe even a green card. I come from borders and people pushing you over them than others, telling you to go back the other way, but knowing that there really isn't a choice. You aren't welcome or wanted, but there isn't really a choice because staying, you're dead and they are firing. You might just be dead too. I come from, but I come from, it's beautiful and it is mine. I come from a village and from many of wombs and I've never been able to say where home is, but I know it. Can't recall my first address, but I know it. The way home feels, the smell, the taste of completion. I can see the smiles that greet me at the doors of my memories. I can recall the vibration and all my loved ones' laughter. My home isn't a sob story, just one of unfortunate black circumstance, but it is mine. And there is comfort in it, the way I love so powerfully, the way I hold all of my family on the same pedestal, the way I love the ones who hold masters from NYU and the ones who mastered how to cook, crack, and smoke it too, the way I love them all the same. I keep our secrets right up on the tippy top shelf, right next to all those generations of recipes that no one ever can duplicate. I know exactly where it is I want to answer when people ask me. Where are you from? I just don't know what to call it yet. But maybe, maybe, all that matters is that it answers back when I need it to. Walter Scott is home. Michael Slager is home with his family. He invites you to visit. There's no doorbell. Instead, you must pull the trigger of a Glock 19, but Michael never hears on the first try, so prepare to fire seven more times. The remnants of the mug shots used as target practice by Florida police have been stitched together into a doormat. It was a gift. Michael hates a mess, but he is known for his cleanup jobs. On the porch, the hollow skulls of the enslaved knock together like wind chimes, or when the wind's right, it'll sneak through an orifice and you'll hear, steal away to Jesus, or amazing grace, or maybe you'll hear Nina. There's a strange chandelier in the foyer. The black bodies are lined up by size, they are stacked, all crowding around a single light bulb. They have diplomas in their left hands. Those ones shine the brightest. The Christmas tree is leaning up against the shed. It has black babies for bulbs. They are decorated in ash and food stamps, blue and red bandanas wrap around its branches right up to its flashing taser of a star. Next door, in Darren Wilson's backyard, or George Zimmerman's backyard, 
or Daniel Pantaleo or Timothy Loman or the Waller County Sheriff, it gets hard to keep track of who's holding the deed, but Confederate flag fellows right above the fire pit. The neighborhood congregates to watch pale, uncooked meat scorch brown, burn into something they can ravage, something they can tear the flesh from without getting blood on their hands. In the kitchen, there is an alcove. All you can see is an intersection, a car without a driver parked precariously by a stop sign. The door is ajar. The engine is still running. The driver's seat is still warm. Four fatherless kids huddle up against the hood. Sometimes, when they get too hungry, they come to Michael's windowsill for apple pies and apology letters that taste sweet for a moment, but turn bitter when the windows shut again. In his bedroom, incense burn. It is there that he prays to his founding fathers and asks his ancestors to keep his whipping hands strong and his record snow white. His mattress is fitted with obituaries and sorrow helps him sleep at night. It is there that he makes love to the justice system. No, he fucks her hard because she is his, she belongs to him, and she will bend just as he likes it, just as she has for every other officer who makes messes of black men, and together they give birth to new generations of uniformed racists and prepackaged dead blacks to keep the media well fed and to keep men like Michael coming home. There is a black woman cleaning the bathroom with slave ships in her ovaries. Every period is a middle passage. When Michael gets bored, he draws targets on her belly and dares her to conceive a world in which her young won't be born with the same markings. He mounts her with the same confidence that he used to plant the evidence by Walter Scott's body. He summons her with the same bass in his voice that he used to lie about it. He knew that dead bodies can't tell the truth or catch you in a lie and that black bodies don't even count as bodies and that you can lie about your body count if the media thinks a nigga had it coming. Mm -hmm. And he knew those things because he was taught those things by stand your ground or else by precedent. There are no consequences for trigger happy cops whose only real crime is improperly disposing of the trash that is blackness. No one gives a fuck. When another black boy is plucked up off the street or up out the ghetto as long as he don't scream too long because he was never meant to last that long. He was never meant to live or breathe and shit. He was never supposed to learn how to read and thank God men like Michael Slater are around to take care of these things. <laughs> I was conceived in praise. Forest repurposed as sanctuary. Closest black bodies can get to heaven surrounded by wood. But black churches have known the melting point of holy things for centuries. Once, my roof housed all the raucous song. I filled myself with stained glass, the beautiful things pulled from fire. But perhaps I was holy for too long. Now I'm a casket of smoke, a broken covenant. I have become the gate to a suffocating heaven, 13 churches in a song of fire, and me, a century of music reduced to wind, while they quote scripture, say coincidence, insist that ash is how you mark something as holy when the floods relinquish their grip. God said the fire next time, but their hands have left nothing up to interpretation. The men, already dressed as ghosts, the ones who came to burn me before, pleaded guilty with smiles, and my cinders still stuck in their teeth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It was never supposed to come this early, but now all my windows are weeping smoke. My pews a row of darkened teeth, while the remnants of me spill into the sky like a prayer. A flock of charred gospels taking to the wind like a flock of ravens. It's so hard. God. It's so, so hard. Now all my windows are weeping, all of this smoke. I am the middle ground between ashes and absolution. They have blessed my rubble with a halo of caution tape. They have summoned a godless magic here. They have set fire to cleanse me of a sin uncommitted. You can burn me, but I will rise again. My bodies built to praise a resurrection. 
always do. wants to be a burning flag, says he'd wrap self round child for warmth, and that is patriotism. I saw a casket flag once, accidentally hung backwards. Those two do a lot of wrapping around children these days. I heard a bullet can howl, but not the poem. Most times it's more like a eulogy I heard in New Orleans. Kids call when the saints a funeral song. Lots of marching feet these days. These days, I hold my sister a little tighter. Don't forget her age or her birthday no more. See, remembering is a shadow clutched too close to the body when you're afraid a body is all you will have left after this. Fact, when looking at the shadow, you cannot tell if a flag is hung backwards, but you can always tell if it's burning. That concludes the preamble to the Poetic Address to the Nation. Please give it up for our emerging poets and DJ92. And now, introducing the host of our main event, the newly named Poet Laureate of Philadelphia, Yolanda Wisher. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the 2016 Poetic Address to the Nation, the final event in the second annual People's State of the Union. I'm Yolanda Wisher, Poet Laureate of Philadelphia and Chief Rhapsodist of Wherewithal for the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture, and it's a great honor to be with you here this evening. Whether you are in the room tonight or tuning in for the live broadcast, Thank you for your creative presence on this historic occasion. As we all know, the President gave his State of the Union address a few weeks ago. It was a speech from one to many, followed by a whole bunch of talking heads competing to tell us what it all means. Here at the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture, we know that democracy is a conversation, not a monologue. And last month, we hosted People State of the Union events across the country, inviting neighbors together to share stories that reflect their own take on the State of the Union. More than 100 communities took part, from elder circles in Maryland to universities in Oregon, from community meals in West Charlotte, North Carolina, to sing-alongs in Carrollton, Georgia, from arts educators in Chicago to theater groups in Arlington, Massachusetts, we've come together, young and young at heart, to sit in circles, share our truths, and listen deeply. We fill our museums, community centers, libraries, places of worship, and living rooms with stories, forging new bonds of empathy, empathy through a shared participatory ritual of reflection and connection. In doing so, we've embodied the simple truth that the State of the Union is not an annual declaration, but something that we create together every day. We've also embodied the truth that all our lives are the material of art, and all our experience is worthy of being uplifted into poetry. So what? So what State of the Union will we choose to create? Democracy for the few or a cultural democracy for everyone? Folks, this is the US Department of Arts and Culture after all, so it should come as no surprise to you that our address tonight, our expression of cultural democracy for everyone, is a poem collaboratively composed of sonnets from poets across the country as well as poems by local luminaries forged from and inspired by the people's stories 
some of which are also included tonight. As my fellow host David Escobar Martin said a few weeks ago, what a tumultuous thing our union is. And I would add, what a beautiful thing it is too. Without further ado, the 2016 Poetic Address to the Nation. of the oppressed, poems with hoodies, finger-tapping, ambling, I mean pissed off and ardently expressed, poems delirious as midnight rambling, bebop, hip-hop, a decima or slam, meter lyrics, free-shaped texts, no matter, bring out the fire, the punch, a resounding jam, let it ring far, a magnificent chatter, naming the nameless Voicing the unheard, questioning the questions, swimming, splashing. No expert strokes, but damn if not expert word. Every line bleeding, grieving, bleeding, slashing. The power of poetry is its stance, page or stage, electrifying or trance. One breath, in one gulp of thin, reedy air, one fading and fatigued red, white, and blue pining, we are told that all of this, this united place of America, belongs to us. And another breath, one air raid angry siren, one hawk spit war cry from a hate filled mob, we are told, get out, go back to where you came from. You and your kind, you marred, you stained, you low man woman on a totem pole. And we are pitted against each other in this new world fight club. In one corner, the aging prize fighters of the American dream, holders of picket fence mirages, wavers of flags and witness of forced seizures of land, wicked water hoses and hooves galloping on black backs. And in another corner, the new arrival, flyweight fresh blood, wary eye crossers of borders, novices of green cards and status, head tied or fully guard, refugee or traveling free. And we bob and we weave. We engage in bare knuckle scrap matches for a place to call home. We tussle hard for the golden ticket, the dangling carrot, while around us mark the gatekeepers, the sons of privilege and lineage who move the line and set the bar and change the rules and won't let us in. See, these are the stories of belonging and not belonging, says Alice in Ithaca. And Phoebe says, I am so in pain most of the time, I just want to go into the closet and lock myself in. Just go up under my bed and hide. But I can't. But I can't because I've come this far by faith, says Marcus in Brooklyn. But I can't because we are dealing with a crisis of spirit, says Jesse. But I can't because I yearn for this country to be for everyone, says Alice. Oh, give me shelter in this fractured union. Give me shelter in this fractured union. Stitch up these worn wounds. Open my mouth. Rip this silence from my foreign tongue. Move this wedge of indifference. Show me a sign that I am home. Somebody show me a sign that I am home. Take away our boxing ring of conflict where we bloody each other with pride and prejudice. Put out a welcome mat. Show me that I am home. Oh, give me shelter in this fractured union for I too am a sister and a prodigal son. I walk the earth and I need to settle. Give me space to be. Won't you let me be in this united place of America? In October 2015, I witnessed a series 
of direct actions on college campuses across the country with students of color stating that their institutions were not doing enough to foster and contribute to their sense of belonging. It was as if the colleges welcomed them to campus and then simply forgot about them, seeking to have these students do cultural competency work for their white peers without compensation. In January 2016, I went to a conference for queer and trans justice and solidarity. There, I witnessed a series of direct actions against the conference and session organizers who welcomed immigration and custom enforcement, ICE, a police department rife with excessive force, surveillance, and other problems, a pro-Zionist organization, and the conference itself, which created spaces that were inaccessible and hostile to fat people and people with disability. These direct actions told me that our citizens are speaking up and standing up and stating that they will be included, they must be included, and that our union must listen. The state of our union is fractured and its citizens are asking for leaders who see and hear and will hold these things close. Dollars fly into the mouths of the rich. Student debt floats back with interest. Our university presidents sail off with million dollar bonuses. They sleep in the Hamptons in summer homes purchased with tuition. We eat instant ramen, stand in lines outside of the grocery store. The snow swirling and sticking to our eggs. Oh, groceries which shiver in our bags. We can eat poetry, but our guts feel the difference between a hot meal and a dream's theoretical nourishment. Homes don't pay the bills, but a job doesn't pay much more. To the 16 million children in impoverished America, you owe so much more. children drink poisoned water and nobody drops their coffee mug because the dying didn't happen overnight and when I say nobody I mean the bodies that lose no sleep because saying because saving a few dollars is softer than saying we didn't plan on investing you in you anyways and in a few years if a bullet misses them and the water doesn't colleges will look like a ghost town and then they'll say, well, what happened? Why didn't they study harder? Sometimes the State of the Union seems all about data, numbers instead of people statistics and voter polls and algorithmic models. How many new jobs created? Body mass index? Did the test scores go up? How many likes did your posts get? How can we sift through your data and determine what books you like, what clothes you might wanna buy, what movies you might like to see? How can we track your purchases, sort through your emails, what products, what words do you like? Yolanda sent some of us 74 stories out of hundreds of stories. She gave us a data bank and asked us to sift through it to discover the poetic state of the union. I tried to use some data mining methods on that big chunk of text 
not to generate dehumanizing statistics, but to try to reconnect the data back to people. I cut and pasted all the stories into various programs that were supposed to help me visualize what was going on. First, I tried a program called Bubbles. The bigger the bubble, the more frequently the word inside was used. But I'm an amateur, and I didn't know how to scrub my data. So those little words, like the, of, and, that, took over. Next, I tried a couple of word clouds. Same principle. The more frequent the word, the larger the, the bubble was. I made a chart with a breakdown of the most common words in the stories Yolanda gave us. People is used 101 times in 74 stories. Like is used 65 times. So I started thinking about what I could do with this information. I started pulling all the 101 uses of the word people in the order they appeared, and here are a few. People surrounded by six hours of national forest. People, they like numbers. People to feel. She said, no, this is an art piece. The last thing people want is to be reminded. People on shores waiting for people. People coming to the shores out of refuge. People in my community, people to behave, but then the people who are in charge don't follow the same rules. People sitting on the other side of the screen, people as humans, all on the same marble, hurtling through the universe. Then I tried to process the 101 peoples in a different way. I made a masostic. This is a form the composer John Cage invented so as to escape the trap of his own intentions, his own likes and preferences. It's like an acrostic, but the keyword goes down the middle like a spine. Using the spine word, people, the program sorts through the big chunk of text and finds the word that has a P in it, like Pandora. Then it finds the next word that has an E in it, like arguments. Then O, in favor, etc. This is the masostic, or part of it. Pandora's box, arguments in favor, weapons. I told him that he died, except that years fighting, of became up, would verify it in your record, put another, another request. The exposure would have filled a whole report. I read that into the test site, if express, wouldn't give up. I knew government pirates gold. They pass in gardens, our pairs told her to. After trying the masostic out on the word people, I decided to look into the second most popular word in the stories, like, and I'll end with this poem called Likes. Like, we can do that? <laughs> like, okay, I'm not gonna work this month. Like, I am patriotic, I have beliefs in this country. Like to tell. Like almost everyone there, like it, not at all. It isn't right like this. Like you, I have my foot in both worlds. Like you, you slap me, you shoot my brother, like this. There was one after the death of one. Like I mean it, LOL. Like-minded people. Like a life or end in the dark. Like I'm different than everybody else. Like they are someone I could be vulnerable with. Like I didn't belong. Like I didn't belong here. Like I finally found where I belong, like that. Like to be in a situation where you are like this, an event to build community. Like what do you do when he's done? Like I don't really know. Like I didn't get the benefit of the doubt. Like there was something wrong with me. Like if they didn't have that experience, like that back then. Like a sailor, like I had no choice because I had no sense left. Like government cheese poor, like I have really benefited from the programs, like I was and I feel very lucky to have come full circle. Like a pancake, like family, like me, like this. Like you're not welcome here in our neighborhood, like I belonged with the kids, like many in this country, like safe passage. Like her without knowing it, like my grandmother the whole time, my whole life. Like how to pee in the woods and how to not freeze to death. Like you're going to die at all times, like that. Like fire in my hands, like numbers, enslaved by technology, like being segregated as if I am orange wedges, like it addresses me as a person, 
Like I've had a very complicated relationship with America my whole life. Like I had this greater understanding of American flaws and was unfooled by the American dream in a very extreme way. Like all tough relationships, like a relationship with my mom. Like if my grandfather was leaving the country or something, it would be like the eagle has landed. Like I'm suddenly part of this American story of people on shores waiting for people. Like this could be happening. Like how, 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 how? Like all this stuff starts in the family. Like let's try to figure out what's making you sick. Like here's a bunch of pills. Like I could be a conscientious objector. Like I understood the war well enough to give my life to it. Like that. <laughs> hospital's nurse came after my mom passed away, she gathered up all of the drugs. And I don't know if you know what they do with drugs when they dispose of them. They actually get a big Ziploc bag, fill it with kitty litter, mix all the drugs together in it, and then pour water into the kitty litter so it makes this hardened, gross mass that people don't want to take and abuse the drugs. And then they put it in the, in the landfill. And so she took the drugs away and I was going through some of my mom's things and I found a little plastic bag that had two little white pills in it which were the anti-anxiety drugs. And I take hardly any drugs myself but I thought to myself, I wonder if my mother thinks that I need these because I'm anxious. I'm anxious about drugs being put into our water, into our groundwater into our landfills and poisoning the environment. I'm anxious about the healthcare system. I'm anxious that we don't have the right kind of care or the right kind of insurance to take care of all the people that need it in this country. I'm anxious that there are people in this country who don't feel like they belong because we tell them, your skin is the wrong color. You love the wrong people. You don't fit our ideal. We don't want you in this country. I'm anxious that nothing will get better, but at the same time, I'm hopeful that things will get better. And so I still have those two little white pills, and I'm hopeful that I'll never have to take them. Oh, who among the chatter-ass unwagged, across the sweet upthrusted gold and shagged, and grizzle-grinned lust must of honeybee, unshedding lawnmowers, grabbing no glee aglow in gummy plastic sprayer things, you, 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 poor thing. How about you drop to your knees, lay face inside one flower, in the flowers trillion flowers that seem to make no sense, but it is true. And doze a while? Who knew the sky was blue like that? The cardinals always playing tag, my dumbass shitty death love going vagabond. Goodbye, dumbass shitty death love, yes. Fare thee well, dumbass, shitty death love. <laughs> Bob Holman, State of the Union, Sonnet, 2016. When, in the ramble of utopic imagination, you find yourself in Alaska, living in languages that have been outlawed for over a century, but somehow have survived 
as surely as the five hours sunlight we'll have here in Anchorage today, January 6th, 2016. Well, you might just want to count those languages and make them official as happened there in 2014, finally beginning a reparation of respect for the 49. It's here that languages live tight to the people. This multi-dimensional place still, knows, still known as Seward's Icebox. The incredible variety of tongues marks Arctic diversity. Support immersion classes. Thriving Klingit, Yupik, and down deer sleeping Iyak, with no speakers, also official. As Tom Hankinser likes to say, what good is official if your language is dying? I am Garifuna, indigenous, native to the Mesoamericas and of African descent. I am a naturalized citizen of this country, but consider myself a Belizean abroad. I have had a green card since the 80s. It had no expiration date, and it was actually pink. <laughs> I was on my way to school one day when I noticed a poster. On it was a big picture of a green card that looked similar to mine, and under it, it read, these cards are no longer valid, and they need to be turned in immediately to be replaced with a new card. This meant one with an expiration date. There was a decision to make. I could turn in my documents for new ones that I would end up having to renew every 10 to 15 years, or become a citizen. I chose the latter. Now, when you apply for citizenship, you're required to relinquish all documents for review for eligibility. This means if you have a green card, you must send it away to the United States government. For about three months, I had no documentation of any sort that said I was allowed to be here in this country. If anything, anything happened, during that three month period, I could easily be deported. Three months walking the streets undocumented almost gave me an ulcer. Finally, I had that dreaded interview where you answer the questions about US history and you meet a US Marshal who has your entire life in a binder. After he chuckled at all the silly things I did as a kid, he closed the binder smiling, looked up at me and said, congratulations, Mark, you're now one of us. <laughs> at that moment, I felt true belonging to this country <laughs> and absolute disenfranchisement all at the same time. Epigram. Vegan? Vegan. I called out sick for you to announce you don't like bacon no more, Beyonce. <laughs> Tweet from Rose Madness. Kiwi bitch slaps with a pink dildo. Treaties, trans, Wilhelmina's Flint, Jacksonville, Quackery and Aflac's omitted ancestral nutsack. Check it. Trump like his lamb halal. Won't admit he fidgets with watermelon for stiff dumps. Me needs to get my berber on. Flex like card carrying Slovenian arms flaunt 
been babble, vowel, yance. Get my papers in pollen, okay? Hella young for kerplunk, high yellow curry, dunk a dunk. Caitlin, where you be? Dobby got your cashmere boy on lease, memoir short due to leaky glaciers. Breezy time, suck online, wordly. Nay, sent Syria, not Tuvalu. Don't believe me? There were pearls before crude, sunken back on sugar tit to smog lead. Sediments tweeted, televised, absent, Mars, liniment. Boko Haram, who that, who that? Cerise stagnant, it cored down a bronze street. Chirac blackness, breadfruit grotted, pan of Africa, now Beijing duck on defected hoverboards. Zika, like Nestle. Wise monkey Detroit. Kiribati lagoon, a minor viral crease, but that dress. Gold, Swiss pleats. Benevolent blue ain't confessing adjourn lords IBS for husclaw. Maul by a kudu, a daydream for Orwellian whackness. <laughs> What is the state of the union? The U-N-I-O-N, -N, the union undone. What is the state of the X state, the SS state of the union undone? And who is undone when the union's undone? Boys who bleed red in playgrounds and parks street corners and porch steps, boys murdered by blue shirts, their mothers and fathers wail, their sisters and brothers wail, muzzled by juries too lily white and too grand to indict. What is the State of the Union the U-N-I-O-N, -N, the union undone. What is the state of the X state, the SS state of the union undone? And who is undone when the union's undone? Old folks and young ones whose food stamps and chip cards are chipped down to nothing, their water leaded, air toxified, laid off and evicted, unwell and unfed, but never unhungered. What is the help of the union, the U-N-I-O-N, the union undone? What is the health of the X state, the SS state of the union undone? And who is undone when the union's undone? The strivers, and seekers who squeak by on ramen, on small squares of bullion, ground down by the brute force of loans. They'd hope for some learning, some good work, good earning, but jobs slipped overseas and homes slid underwater. What is the debt of the union? the U-N-I-O and the union undone? What is the debt of the X state, the SS state of the union undone? What about the undoers, who will never be done with undoing the union, the U-N-I-O-N, undoing the state as they build the X state, the SS state of their union? What about our union? The you and I on. The you and I on. The union you and I have got to take 
back and redo. Undo their undoing. Redo our union. Our you and I on our more perfect union of we. hurt the kind other people can see but you can't see yourself some b l u r blur some glow some gloom faster than film pinched eyes and the aunt who isn't your aunt comes closer and asks you all right well that's not you not the guy i know Stop fretting. 
Let's talk. No one else can tell your story. Who has that? And me, she says, what do I want? Look me in the face. Okay, I do. And we sit and find out she's been sick for the past six months. Why tell, she says. Anyway, I'm telling you now. My body hurts like hell, but my brain is fine. My appetite is amazing. I'm still me. Do me a favor and sit for another minute. We don't have to talk so much. You're hooked, baby. Hooked with the phone and the everything else. Unplug. Leave it home. Even at home. Wherever that is. When you're doing the dishes, do the dishes. Tunneling, dig, dig the tunnel. Telling a story, tell it to me. There's no secret what we need. I am 11 years old and Panasco, Panasco could use some improvements. I come from a huge family, but all of my family is everywhere. I have 56 cousins in New Mexico. I have two cousins in Georgia and six in Tokyo. I have four uncles, Josh, Johnny, Zach, and Adam. Josh lives in New York City and he is treated badly because he's gay. And Johnny lives in Texas and works at a car testing center. Zach lives in Savannah, Georgia, in the military. Adam lives in Clovis on the railroad. My mom works, and my dad is a bookkeeper for the Taos Farmer's Market. My mom and my dad and my sister need a place to hang out sometimes. There is nothing to do, but I do a lot. I have marimba, trapeze, and voice lessons. This is a very good place to ski. Panasco needs some improvements, like a community center with a skate park and more stores, and more jobs for people who do not have jobs. The school I go to needs more buildings, like a gym and a cafeteria. We need more resources. There are too many drunk drivers. This town isn't really a safe place for children to be free. I did not come with a story, but stories of people born while dying came along when I arrived. Babies are cute, whatever, but they grow into monsters, or at least that's what monsters posing as humans with their torches and pitchforks insist. Everybody makes a big deal about these fingers, these toes, but how do I say that the airflow is vital? So much involved to keep pushing. For the start, I rattled when I took in what refineries shat, sentenced to entertain death before learning to read, if only for entertainment. Listen to me, breathe. Concentrate on your lungs with thanks that you don't have to heave and pray in efforts to get out. A prison wasn't built here because it'd be cruel and unusual to force inmates to inhale. So instead, there was porn and junkyards and us and asthma. Living on Cancer Alley was a joke as children at play, until it wasn't a joke, being jealous of lifers as a child in the waiting room, shut down before being admitted. Risk assessment is bureaucracy speak for trying to find ways to not die. No more talk of landscapes and sunshine. Black smoke made sundowns majestic, painted in shades of toxin. Trigger alert. This shit is funny. These habits of unseen for survival. 
There's fun and importance in teaching a child to pee outside and keep from choking to death. In slag and dross is the elusive taste of laughter, moving as fluid circulates, disposed to mood and condition. We, this history's desperate surprise, we, this mammoth fuck-up, trying to get away from fossil fuels, I got stuck in the band of a tire. Silica dust in plastic bags keeps me from getting too high. So ha, 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 I was so relieved when I learned that rage could indeed be productive. Some FTP in a suit and tie rage, some Audubon talk not for the birds rage, some going to the desert and coming back with love, getting that it was love all along. Some of this is sounding incorrect to you, I know, okay. You might be right, but to remove it would be incomplete. I can't speak each language to communicate with others whose most epic struggle is for that one clear breath whispering into their chest an assurance that things will continue. Radioactive works as a metaphor, except for cancer wards here and villages bombed, just pick one. The shit of oil by the airport makes warplanes go so they can shit overseas. The light here's all wrong. Quit telling me that the full moon makes people crazy. Money does. <laughs> the villagers and me, we need new light to belong to a different constellation glinting with the import of stars to sailors. We suspect that it's already here. Look, I think it might be the night lights. There are lovers who would find each other by following patterns in darkness. This isn't some Three Kings shit. I didn't get this from roomy times. This is some 21st century Oakland shit playing out in a poet's backyard. Moon King and Moon Queen are now Moon King and Moon King. Not together, but together, and there's no Saudi crown prince doing that. Studies commence from up here on the roof. The veteran who burned the flag made me tea from crates that washed up on the shore from once upon a time. Can I, can I just sit up here and drink this yogi green to breathe? I light a match and fingers burn. A newborn knows this story. Amy reports, all pedophile priests to get an eternity at hard labor. Cops who shoot black youth, life sentences in prisons run by their mothers. <laughs> the people have spoken. Our lives finally matter. Bernie's so far ahead in the polls, he's a shoe in for the big White House. All other candidates have dropped out, <laughs> leaving their war chest to the poor, sustainable energy, or refugee relocation. Like the biblical Samson, he who cannot be named has lost his hair. His polling numbers plummeted, and he retired to his tower's oblivion. I wake from this dream, and it's 2016. Truly, a new year has dawned. I hardly had any money. I was on my three-speed Bangor bicycle heading downtown. I noticed some food sticking out of a dumpster at the Kroger store, and as I rode my bike over there, a car drove up full of old ladies. The driver got out and said, is there anything good today, dearie? I looked at her and said, it's full of food. 
Everybody then got out of the car, one with a broken limb, one with a cane, old ladies like me, like I am now. She said, ooh, can you reach these? I jumped in, started pulling out food and handing it to the ladies. They carried it to the car and filled their trunk. Oh, we're so happy, they said. Just then, the cardboard man came by, skinny and toothless with a cardboard cart, which he would use to collect cardboard. The driver said to him, ooh, we've got some great food for you today. He said, I can't eat anything. I don't have any teeth. She said, it'll be OK. Then she whispered to another lady, uh, go talk to him. The other lady went around to talk to him, had me give her some melons, and then she slipped them under the cardboard on the man's cart. She said, he'll eat those. He just doesn't like to take anything. This was a group of people who all knew each other. I got out of the dumpster. The driver said to me, we're going to have to leave now. We've got to go to the bakery. It's time for bread. She asked me, wouldn't you like some of this food to take it home? I'm on my bike, I said. I can't take anything home. Amazingly, she reached into another dumpster and pulled out a bicycle basket. <laughs> like a magic act. Then she pulled out twist ties and attached it to my bike. We filled it with food, and I took it to where I was living and cooked a huge meal for the people I was living with. devotion 
or if it's raised up palms facing Mecca proclaiming God's greatness, we take the hand that has been extended. This is how we get through. This is how we get by. This is how we get on. This is how we'll get forward. We don't leave a hand lone and dangling like a strange fruit that drop, that the bastards will pluck, that defeat and alienation not. Take the hand. This is how we get through the, the thing that separates Together, we hold step. Energy. We give power, we give life, in solidarity, in community. This is how we get through. This is how we get through, oh yeah. This is how we get through. This is how we get through this sort of thing. Can you do Stranger took my hand, and, and I remember, remember thinking, this is how we get through. This is how we get through. This is how we get through this sort of thing. One flame. One flame. One flame. One flame. Everyone. And the stranger took my hand, and I remember thinking, Our union is the night and your Tunisia itching to be young again. Morning breath against thighs and knees against hips. The burnt sage of Mr. Don's sacks caught in the nine o'clock trees like pieces of a dream. Miss Barb bent over crushed flowers closest to the curb. Jimmy next door no longer sitting ball headed and big bellied on the porch writing the novel in his minivan, or belting Zappa into anything but gentle evenings. The state we're in is the neck back soup your mother used to make. All the stuff you don't want, some stuff you do. Everybody had their own piece of chicken, and once upon a time, people would suck the marrow out of bones, make sure something would survive. Gods in other places. God's busy, God's too full, so we take over for a spell check, fall into each other's clothes, fall into each other like clothes and the dryer. What Tish says in Beale Street, like getting hit by a truck, we step from our love scenes into streets where sentient buses race to end our all. She's talking about Fani's lovemaking, but it was the most beautiful thing that happened to me. And still I see Baldwin, like Jimmy next door, preaching between the lines of a wraparound porch built onto the side of a Negro mountain, waiting to be renamed. Our union is such that the Ganges and the Flint flow like the rivers of Jordan and Wonka land. Our union, like poetry on bathroom stalls, sanctified like our beginnings, our odds, and our ends. That concludes the 2006 Poetic Address to the Nation. Thank you all for coming.
thank you all for watching. I want to send a special thanks out to our event and media partners, the Painted Bride Art Center, Philly Cam, Free Speech TV, as well as my squad for Poetic Truth Telling, the organizing team for this event. Also, a special thanks to my USDAC colleagues who conceived, designed, and implemented the People's State of the Union, which led to this event. To learn more about the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture, because I know you do now, visit usdac.us. You can sign up as a citizen artist, and you'll find out where you can watch a video of tonight's performance. I'm gonna call the cast out. Come on, y'all. Good night.